Right. Let's yeah. Let's get started. We are. Where are we? There's the windows. Oh, thanks everyone for coming to another ACF chat. Fr ACF chat Fridays. I've missed the last couple because of holidays and stuff. So it's nice to be back. Nice to see some faces. Um, we are recording the session as we now typically do each time. So it should that video recording should go up on our on our blog. We'll do a post next week about it. Um, in case you're new, I'm Ian Paulson, the product manager for ACF. And we've got some of the team with us today. We've got some engineers actually out at the moment. So we've got Anthony with us uh, and we've got Damon from DevRel and we, we've got Mike as well, who's uh, works on the content team. So we've got a sort of a, a mixture of people from WP Engine and ACF in general. Um, so today we, we're we going to take a little break from our usual open Q&A session, although we're going to have the Q&A run in and we're going to answer questions if we've got time at the end. But I'm going to try and do a demo uh, of one of the features that's coming to 6.2. Um, so, yeah, we have been talking about this maybe on and off for a while. 6.2 is coming soon. Um, and one of the features is the ability to create bi-directional relationship fields in the UI without having to touch code or use any other sort of plugin to do that. Um, so, yeah, it's planned for 6.2, which it's very close to beta release. I'm going to be typically evasive on dates or firm times but yeah the beat is coming soon uh we've got actually an email list that you can sign up to if you want to hear about beta releases and obviously that is signaling the, the release wagon is rolling down the hill so we're getting close to 6 2. um so yeah let's let's talk about bi-directional let me just share my screen and share the right one you'll see that okay yeah Brilliant. Let me just move some other annoying Zoom bars around. Right, so uh, bi-directional relationships are a bit of a strange one. I think we talk about them a lot, but it's sometimes hard to just to get your head around what they are and why you'd use them. Um, so basically, ACF has a number of field types that allows you to create relationships between data objects. And when I say data objects, I mean posts, pages, custom post types even taxonomies, even users. Um, and the field type that we probably most um, relate this to is the relationship field. But we've got post object field, we've got a user field, and we've got a taxonomy field. Um, and so with these fields, when you're editing a post or, or custom post type or, or any other sort of data object, you can choose other posts to form a relationship between that post and those posts. So the relationship field allows you to sort of select from a left-hand side uh, bar uh, area some posts and save that post to say right I am relating post A to post B to post C and post D and a bit of meta will be stored on post A that will say B, the IDs for B, C and D so that relationship is set on post A but it's it's just a one directional relationship at the moment because that data about that relationship is only saved on the post you're editing post A um, and obviously that's works for some situations, but there's going to be other scenarios where you actually want to have post B knowing that it's connected to post A. So when you query post B for those connections, it stores it on both posts, the relationships, and it makes it easier to, um, to, to display things, to query things, um, and, and make that relationship bi-directional, which is what we're talking about with bi-directional. And I feel like I'm explaining that. And it's almost explaining it to myself because it's easy to get tripped over with these things and not quite understand what well, I don't understand all the time, um, some of the data structures. So, yeah, at, at the moment, you can do, you can create a bi-directional relationship in code. And this is the, the documentation we have at the moment, which is a function that you can hook into the update method when you're saving on post A to basically go and take that relationship and save it on all of the other posts that you're you're selecting that relationship for, which, I mean, it, it's worked for now, but, you know, we want to put a UI around it. We want to make this thing something that people can do very easily within the admin. So, yeah, let's, let's take a look at how this is going to work in 6.2. Um, this is a very, very quick demo site that I set up this morning. Uh, it's just centered around a region of Portugal in the south, and it's got a load of blog posts about activities you might want to do in Portugal or in the Algarve region. So 
a really, really simple example for why you perhaps use a relationship field and why you'd want to make it bi-directional is to have related posts. I think this is something that most people have come across on blogs in the past. You can have plugins to do this, but you can do this with ACF with uh, relationship fields. So for example, I've got five posts here. Some of them are about golf and I want people to who read this article about golf and then go and ahead and read other ones about golf that I've cherry picked um, for them. So at the moment I have, and this is a bit of a bit of an all over the place demo because I've, I'm touching on quite a few things here. This is a block theme site. The first time I've actually created one for a while. And I have created a special block with ACF blocks, which is part of ACF Pro to display the related posts. Uh, and I've not yet set the meta up behind this, but uh, this is basically a block that is showing on whenever whenever you hit the single template for the post. Um, but let's go ahead and create go away zoom. Let's go ahead and create a field group for blog posts. So this is just any kind of uh, fields around the blogs. And I'm going to create a relationship field. And I'm going to call it related posts, because that is what this field is going to do. I'm going to limit the relationship field to only show posts, because I only want to select posts. Uh, and I think everything by default is perfect there. However, let's draw your attention to this new advanced tab that will only appear on the relational field types. So we talked about the relationship field, the post object field, taxonomy users. This is a new uh, tab that now stores the bi-directional toggle setting. Um, some of the UI, perhaps there's going to be some extra uh, text changes, copy changes, and maybe some um, more information here. But effectively, for this related post field, I'm turning on the bi-directional relationship. And now I've got a tail ACF. OK, so you're storing for post A the IDs of the posts that you've selected in, the, in this relationship field in the related posts uh, field, which is the related posts meta key. But where do you want to store on post B and post C and post B and post D the ID for post A, like the reverse, the sort of the target piece of data? And for relational related posts, simply, I just want to store it. Ooh. What's okay. happened there? I was probably going to have to save it because I want to save it to the same field because the connection, the data objects that I'm connecting to are both posts. So I want to store that relationship data in the same field. So it's going to be, you look at post A, you query it, you're going to look for the related underscore posts meta key. If you want to look at post B, you'll look for the same. So that is... Again, a bit a bit of a weird one to get ahead around, but it's a sim simple uh, example of the bi-directional, which is saving the data in the same place. So I'm going to save that now. Uh, this field group is already going to show on the posts. So let's go and have a look, quick look at my... Uh, let's set some stuff up. So, okay, let's look beyond the fairways. That is a golf one. So now when I edit this, I will see the, um, the blog post field group. I've not named it very well, but this relationship field now is at the bottom and I can select uh, any of the posts that are published, but I obviously just want to select in terms of creating relationship, the golf ones. So tea time paradise, the rest don't seem to be golf related, but I want the readers to go and read those afterwards. So I'm going to hit update now. And when I, let me go back to my, so for the Beyond the Fairways post, I should have, let me just double check this in table plus, post 32, meta key. I now have a related post meta key for the two IDs of the post that I've just selected. But because we've turned on bi-directional, we should have something on these posts as well. So let's have a quick look. So tea time in paradise. Scrolling down, let's hope this has worked. Yeah, I now already have this reverse relationship back to the Beyond the Fairways post saved automatically because we've toggled on the bi-directional relationship and it's done it on the save, um, which kind of makes it now super easy to... Why doesn't WordPress let you just view the site? But if I go and view the 
beyond the fairways now post on the front end my acf block that is effectively just going to get the related posts and outputting them in a simple list is showing those two things that i've selected and if i go and view these ones we should see the reverse and it goes back to beyond the fairways so kind of a simple concept i apologize if this is everybody kind of knows about it or you know the, the concept and showing it but this is just how nice it is now within the ui um, and i do just want to quickly call out so the the block I created to create this section here is purely a very simple ACF block using the block.json method. Um, we've been talking about this for a while. We're redoing the ACF blocks documentation part of the resources section on ACF. And I followed the tutorial that we've got in, in a draft at the moment that's going to be coming to the site soon to, to create this. So it was simple for me as a non-developer just to kind of get this um, up and running. So a, uh, a block.json to define what the block does. And then in the template, it basically says for the post, go and get the meta key for related posts or the meta values, and then iterate over them and put them out as a link. So that is now a related posts section of the site working with a relationship field with a bi-directional set. Um, but you can do more with a bi-directional relationship field, which I think we, I kind of covered by saying uh, when you select the target field, let's go back to um, too many tabs. If anyone who works with me knows I've got a tab addiction. So this was a simple example, connecting post to post. But what happens if we're trying to connect uh, different objects together? And the, give this me. Right, so you might have seen on this, I have got uh, a number of other post types that I've registered because this is a tourism site. Uh, it's not just about, it's not just a blog about the Algarve. It's going to show hotels. It's going to show attractions, local attractions, local golf courses. Um, I'm not obsessed with golf, just, just to put that out there, but I am. Uh, so uh, earlier today, I created these post types using the post type and taxonomy registration feature that came to ACF 6.1. Uh, and I've created these three uh, post types so I can go and fill out hotels and golf courses and attractions. But the key thing here is, obviously, the Algarve is big. If you, you're going to view a hotel and you want to see if you want to stay there, you want to see the local golf courses or the local attractions. Let's connect some of these things together with relationships to say, right, you're going to go to that hotel. You're going to see these three golf courses nearby. And, and actually, those are the pertinent ones you want to see, you want to, to visit. So this is where the bi-directional relationship field comes into a more of a complex example. Um, so I have, I've filled out some hotels, I filled out some golf courses, and I filled out some attractions. And then I'm gonna, you're gonna excuse me, I'm gonna do a bit of a prepared earlier, but I have created some, yeah, don't, don't click delete there. I've created some field groups about the golf courses and about the attractions and about the hotels. So let's take a look at golf courses. This is another relationship field that says allow people to select golf courses. Uh, and maybe, yeah, maybe this isn't actually. Anyway, so the so the idea here is if you want to uh, you want to go and edit a. Let's, let's go back to the first screen. Sorry, the demo's running away with me slightly. So I've got this archive of hotels and the, this golf resort, which is a hotel, has these nearby golf courses and nearby attractions. And what we've done here is we've created a, a field group for local golf courses, and it shows up when you're editing a hotel or an attraction. And so you can then select from these golf courses which ones are local to the hotel. Um, but the key thing here is instead of saving the bi-directional relationship field on uh, the data in the same place for both the golf course and the hotel, it's got to save it. Um, it's got to save it in two different post objects. So this is the local golf course. Sorry, post meta. This is the local golf courses um, field, which is 
you are saving this to either a hotel post type or an attraction post type. And when you save the reverse, I, I think I actually, I tried to make this really flexible and now this isn't working so well, but if we, if we ignore, we take the attraction out of this. When you save uh, the golf course and you select local hotels, it's gonna save the data in uh, the local golf courses post meta for that hotel. If that makes sense, I mean, please, please feel free to put some questions in if I'm going a bit too fast or not making sense because that don't do many of these demos. So, yeah, the golf course here or the golf resort. Sorry, it's a hotel. Let's view this. Is now showing nearby attractions and nearby golf courses because, again, once I've saved this golf course and selected nearby hotels, it saves it the reverse. So it's got the bi-directional relationship field there. Um, yeah. I'm going to stop there and just ask if there's any questions because I feel like I've, I've gone from simple to complex, but made it even more complex with my poor demo. Maybe we can show the uh, which fields have bi-directional settings. Yeah, good, good shout. So. So if you're creating a field group, you can, I think we've got them. Yeah, we, we, we separate them out or we group the field types. Um, post object is very much a simple way of selecting different post posts of any type. It, it just doesn't give you the, um, it just doesn't give you this related posts or sorry, relationship. UI, which is like left-hand side of all the things to pick from, right-hand side of what you've selected. Um, we've also got the page link, taxonomy and user. Um, so you can set, like if you're editing a user and you wanna go and, I mean, it's a bad example, but go and select the posts that they've written. You could, you could create um, a, a relationship between the user and posts. So different types of objects, not just post pages and custom post types. Um, and you'd use the bi-directional setting and the target object to, just to choose on that user wh which, uh, which field is gonna store the post IDs basically for that relationship. And then on the post IDs, on the post, it will store the user IDs to be like I don't know, authors of the, that post. So yeah, I mean, is anyone in the chat you know, used relationships in this way before? Have they used the code? Um, is this something that's resonating with them or is this a kind of a, a strange concept at the moment? And a small group, so feel free to unmute or, you know. Yeah, I use it and, uh, and I have actually questions. If if there's no relationship, are, are the related hotels and golf course titles, post titles, whatever, are they gonna show up or are they just gonna not be there? Uh, do you mean on the front end is this? Yeah. Yes. So if there's no, if there's no related post, is it still going to say related post? So it's it's probably quite important for me to just clarify. I've tried to create a, a proper end-to-end -end demo here, yeah. which shows yeah, yeah. what's happening on the front end. My ACF block, which is just consuming this this related post uh, field data. You know, I, I think earlier I, I had it wrapped in a. You know, if it's empty, just don't do anything. Don't output anything. But okay, you know, so you'd have to wrap it. Exactly. We ACF as in terms of the plugin is not opinionated about how you use the data. The, re right. the relationship field or the, the bi-directional relationship setting for the relationship field. It's just all about data storage. Um, okay. you can use that data in any way. You don't have to use a block template, you can use a classic template, you could, you know, use your page builder to go and grab that data out. But right. it's That's it's cool. now, you know, it, it's making sure the data is saved both places. Cool. Yeah, you could All do right. something really cool with like, uh, like maybe uh, pick a random post from the list and maybe make it like the featured of of that that section and maybe have it treated a little differently. So you can do some really cool stuff with it. Yeah, exactly. I think I probably, you know, I don't want to confuse what what the feature is that's coming to six two in terms of what happens in the front end yeah. with the ACF blocks. I just kind of wanted to showcase again okay. how we would do this in a block world with ACF blocks. So uh, here's another one: if we have a site with existing bi-directional links create you know we used uh, acf extended 
uh, will AC will this new ACF recognize these relations, these existing links? Yes. Well, okay. So it will exit the data that's stored. So uh, the existing uh, bi-directional storage of like array of posts that are here on that post and array of posts on this post that will remain. I think if you want to change to the default the the ACF method, you'll have to you'll have to go through um, the process of. Uh, let me just here is. Uh, the process of selecting this setting because ACF extended will have it down here and that will be a completely different setting controlling their version of it so you'd need to turn right. that off and then turn ours on so it's, it's it's effectively the same UI it's very very similar you you turn on bi-directional you select the target field for where to store so you so, know so if, you turn it on but but if you turn it on, is it what I'm asking? Is it going to is it going to pick up the relationship that's already there, or yeah. I have to recreate those relationships? No, they will. the The relationship will already be there because that's that's kind of what's stored in the underlying meta post meta table. Okay. Um, so it'll work fine. I mean, it's there's a, there's an argument to say if you're already creating bidirectional with ACF extended, you perhaps don't need to go through the pain of turning their setting off and turning ours on we're not we're not doing a kind of a smart migration like we would have done with the custom post types ah, okay so yeah it, i think this is probably good for new builds or new fields um, rather than you know changing what you've got and then the second part of that question is would there be any conflicts it sounds like there won't be no, if you no. have acf extended bidirectional links okay. yeah just just don't have them both turned on at the same time because it would be trying to do double double yeah. saving and yeah all right cool. that sounds good thank you this looks good no this is awesome actually yeah it's, it is quite a powerful feature that like having it having it only as a code solution for so long has yeah has probably not helped adopt how you know because people have just gone for workarounds like david's mentioned you've used yeah, post to post in the past picture. yeah yeah Hey, and real quick too, um, just curious um, to go over again, like what, what are the different things that you can, you can sort, can you sort by taxonomy, category, tags, um, you know, what can I use to do that bi-directional selection? Uh, do you, are you referring to the? You can do the taxonomy. I, I believe taxonomy is uh yeah, so in the UI, when you want to like be able to select like it's different post types, or can you can you select like anything that has this category, anything that has this taxonomy can be a bidirectional relationship. Uh, yes, so there's there's a, there's a slight nuance there that when you're if if you've got a a relationship field, let me come back into the blog post one. So say this is this related post allowed you to select post pages you could mm -hmm. you could also allow it to select pages you could also allow it to select golf courses you could say only ones that are published you could say only ones that are in the area of faro for example which is a taxonomy i've added to golf course okay this then this then restricts what posts are displayed to your content editors mm -hmm. to select from in their relationship field um and, and this is granular for you to limit what they can do but if you want them to actually select a taxonomy, like to connect, I, I don't know how you why you necessarily you do it on off the top of my head, but maybe a user, if you want them to select users to create relationships between, I don't know, a custom post type and a user object, uh, then that is that wouldn't be the relationship field with these filters. It would be the uh, the user field. So hang on, let's let's come back out of that and actually make a proper example so it's easier to see. So say, for example, this is a really bad example of an author. I am now selecting the a user to connect it to this post. So it'd be a post ID to a user ID. Um, so that's that's where we've kind of got this idea of different relational fields that allow you to select different object types. But I think you were perhaps referring more to the to the um the way you can filter 
different yeah and i did see I, I did see category come up as one of those options too so just the way i would do it if like i have a ballet website that has a bunch of different company subsets and so if i'm showing like a bi biography of one of those ballet performers like all the other people in their subset could be displayed in cards um because they were of a certain category without having to uh, you know, before I would have templatized it in Beaver Builder or something and 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 reshown them and lived through them that way. But this way, it seems like I could just, if I could just select that taxonomy for those related posts so that after you view the one bit, it it would almost like templatize that effect from, from what I'm seeing here. And then every other person that's in that same group, the same thing would happen when it when it looped through uh, them from, from what I see here. Yeah, so... Are you describing you you connect either you know people to a taxonomy and then display all the posts in that taxonomy automatically, basically? Yeah, yeah, basically, just a way to autom automate um, you know uh, a post type and all the different uh, you know uh, entries in that post type. Yeah, and do yeah. it in, in, in that case. Way. In that case, you would do something like in, in so you've got the data of all the users um, on the front end display. You would do something like querying the posts for those users and then list mm -hmm. those out. Um, so yeah, you could totally accomplish that. Okay. Yeah, I, no, I think cool. with with all these relational fields, you can you can kind of slice and dice, and get as anything you need. Like if you wanna if you wanna use taxonomies as a as a very quick way of getting to lots of posts that you've categorized, you know, let your content editors select the taxonomy instead, and then in your back in your front end code, retrieve what they have saved as a taxonomy. Go and get all the posts in that taxonomy and display the posts that way. And you, you know. You, I think this is the beauty of ACF. It gives you the ability to kind of do what you need and you can structure the data to make it as easy as possible. Um, but yeah. Cool. Thank you. No worries. And we've got some use cases here on the right sidebar. Um, Josh uses user relationships to create committee type and team pages. Uh, yeah, that's that's actually one uh, another one that I, I use to describe this feature is um, like employees and departments. And let's say that you have employees that move departments a lot. And when you change them, you want that department to reflect it. Or if you change your department side, change the people, you want those people to reflect that data. So it's just a good way to keep things in sync. I, I made a site for a university once and I'm just like, man, I really wish I had this back then because you had to go into each one and edit them and keep them in sync. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, cool. I mean, I'm happy to answer more questions around this feature, or we can talk about any other things people want to talk about, uh, anything that's any particular problems they've got or, you know, feature requests. Sorry, I'm just reading Kelly's use case. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm glad this is this is going to prove useful. It's one of these things that because it just it's been around for so long and in the form of code or ACF extended, it kind of feels like it's not we're not doing that much, but actually it's just such a powerful thing that it makes massive sense just to have in core in the core plugin. So hopefully it'll be useful. Well, I would really like the idea that you can add it to any one of the relational fields too, that it's you know flexible enough that you could just go in and add it to one or add it to all of them if you need it for all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've got some work to do on the documentation around it, because I think when when Liam, who was building out the feature, realized that, as you say, you can add it to all these different relational fields, you've got real flexibility, but you can actually get into some issues with um, if you were to create a, I don't know, a user field and link that to a post, but then that user field appeared on, because uh, obviously, these fields appear in field groups that could appear on different location rules, multiple location rules. If they then start crossing different object types, you are then trying to save like user ID one to a post, but is that a user ID or is it a post ID? Um, so there's gonna be some documentation just around like making sure we uh, make you aware of the pitfalls and it's it all comes down to database design and not trying to be too clever with like the structures of the field groups. 
Exactly. It's going to come down to to getting your head around how the data has got to be structured for how you're using it and then yeah. using these tools to then map that data out as best you can. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking through like what, what uh, some reasons why you would want bidirectional for, for like, say, something like a featured post. And, and it hit me that when you have something that's like a featured post in a view of a template page, once you go into that post, it no longer has the context that it's like the hot article of that of that page. So you could do something like the title and then next to it, it says something like hot article or whatever it is, you know, so you have that context once you get to the destination. Yeah, definitely. Featured uh, post that actually thing. knows it's featured, right? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. I was like, wait, I don't think our featured posts know that they are featured. Right. They're mm -hmm. special and they don't know it. <laughs> so this use case is interesting. Nonprofit uh, education site with custom posts for educator, advocates, fellows, link bidirectional to stories. Well, this person has been a benefit to their community. That's awesome. That's an interesting one. I like that. Yeah, it's such a super like it, it's a super flexible um, field, and now with this setting, that yeah, the use cases just start. It, it, you know, anything can um, anything can be made useful with the relationship. Um, Hey, and I noticed you went into uh, Table Plus to check on your key. Um, I don't, I don't do anything with database or anything like that. But was just curious about that tool because I know it's in local. And yes. um, like, um, what when would you want to like use that or to use that to troubleshoot or when would that come into play? Yeah, I think I, I typically have used like I, I get access to database quite a lot just to check stuff. Um, but yeah, I think I was using it earlier just to basically. I'd set the demo up, create all these relationships between all the fields, uh, the posts, and then just wanted to obviously start again. So I just went into the post meta table and and found anything to do with related posts and just deleted it. Um, but yeah, I do like I do quite like the fact that you've got the table plus add on in local, so you can just quickly go and uh, open up the database straight away with a one click. But yeah, I haven't I mean, switched yet. I'm still using adminer. <laughs> I feel oh, like uh, such a noob now. <laughs> Yeah, t Table Plus was, I was using SQL Pro, I think, and then that got mm -hmm. abandoned and then someone suggested SQL Ace and it just, and then Table Plus just seemed the the more uh, maintained, but yeah, it's, I, I don't know, the database is probably, or, or going into the database is probably not necessarily recommended, but yeah. I guess you can do some damage if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, totally. And especially if you don't, the good thing about Table Plus is you can, you can color code things as well. So it's like, don't go into production and start blowing away mm -hmm. tables because you think it's your local. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I know we've done a demo of the options pages before we've talked about, because obviously that is another big feature that's coming to 6.2, um, the ability to create an options page in the UI. Let's see if that. I was going to try and enhance this demo with having site-wide fields that appeared on the uh, on the front end, but I didn't have time. Um, but just I think the thing nice thing to call out about this is you can create an options page, um, which is very easy. You can turn on an advanced, very similar to the custom post type and taxonomy registration UI, where you've got this advanced configuration. Um, and then when you go to your field group, you can, you now have the ability to, to select it there without having to bounce the code. But the other thing, which is quite nice is if this is like, I don't know, marketing, badly spelled, this is a whole different field group about site-wide data that other people are going to change and it's not the theme settings you can add an options page right from this screen and it brings up the badly named uh it brings up a, a modal to to create an options page in line without having to you know bounce to code or bounce to the options page ui and it does it for you there yeah, and then this is going to be really great to add options pages from the uh, from the back end instead of from code yeah yeah and we've got 
JSON sync for it as well. So you don't have to, yeah, it's it's like a field group. It's like a custom post type. You, you can create it in the UI. It will create the JSON for you. And then you can you know commit it, make it portable. Um, but yeah. Oh, nice. Great shout out, Damon. Yeah, Damon is doing a, a, a much more in-depth uh, event workshop around the options page, um, which is, yeah, again, teasing the 6.2 release. So the link's there. Just register. Nice. Thanks, Damon. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, what is what is the options page for those who are not familiar with it? Uh, yeah, great, great question. And I think we we do gloss over some things without perhaps giving them uh, enough context. But so if you're thinking of building a site and you've got some information that you want your content editors to um, store in fields, but they're not it's not data that's going to be about posts or post uh, custom post types. It's global data like your phone number of your business, your address, um, or even even simply like the Google Analytics property that maybe you're not using a plugin, you just want to store that somewhere mm. and it's going to change per site, but it's a site-wide setting. Uh, you can create, so let's just do that example. You can create fields that are these kind of site-wide fields. Let's create another one. Have we got uh, And then instead of making them available on a post or whatever, you can say this now appears on this options page called marketing. And now you see on the left hand side, there's a new top level page in the um, in the left hand menu called marketing. Mm -hmm. And this is a place you can mm -hmm. your content editors can store this data. You can access them in the same way as you do with um, data that's stored on posts or pages of custom post types with get field. Uh, there's a slight there's an options prefix to then your field key and you can then output them in your you know in, in the javascript for the google analytics in your header or the mm. support email in your footer of your template and yeah and uh, yeah and i would recommend going to damon's event because he's going to dive a lot deeper into it but this is cool. the options page feature for uh for acf is something that's part of acf pro so you can't you can't create options pages with acf free uh historic well up until 6.2 which is coming soon you can create options pages with code uh, and you have to register that in your functions.php or in a, a must-use plugin which again isn't a very great experience and so now we've, we're bringing the ui to creating these options pages and giving you full control over uh all of the settings because otherwise you can have to yeah. look at the documentation and not know that you can change the menu icon or and uh, you can redirect change the labels that's, yeah, that's the exactly. one thing too, I think is a good call out. The redirect to child, if you add a, a sub page, so you know how when, when in an options page, that parent menu item, when you click on it, it takes you to a page and then there's a child page underneath it. You can set it to where when you click on that top level, it takes you to the first child level so that you don't have to make a page for that parent. Exactly. So for the marketing one, we'll just, I'll create an email page because marketing folks might want to store loads of email settings about HubSpot or CRM or whatever. Um, the parent page is now marketing. And so this, when I reload that, yep. uh, I think it's on the initial, no, it should, you didn't set a redirect maybe, I think maybe that's what happened. No, it's not there. Where's it at? Yeah, that's, that's weird. I mean, it's not, a, it's not a live demo without bug finding. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no parent on the marketing page. The email page is a different slug and it's. Marketing. And hub for over marketing? You're not getting any sub pages on marketing? Oh, you're. No. I think you're on an old branch actually, because I noticed you had some text missing in the bidirectional. Ah, uh, no, I I kind of cleared that out because I wasn't. We weren't. Oh, right on. We weren't like release ready for that copy, but I'll look into this because I. I mean, the PR is still in review anyway, so this is not yeah. the final final. <laughs> Essentially, when with the ACF top level menu drop down, you've got these sub pages. You you would be creating submenu items underneath marketing called email uh, but yeah that yeah the options page is, is is a very valuable feature let's just come out of that yeah there's definitely something going on there we'll, we'll investigate 
good bunk finding right. people. Brian, as far as far as use case goes, Brian, I've always done like uh, all my footer data, but you know, for things like the site address, uh, uh, social media links, anything I'm going to put in the footer other than like maybe menu links, I'll put all that footer data inside an options setup. So that way the client can just go in and edit, make changes. If somebody's, if they new phone number, new fax number, whatever it is that they want to tweak, they can tweak it from the options page. Uh, that sounds smart. Just, just give it a quick, quick tour of this site. Kevin, I know you joined late. Kevin's the product manager for WP Migrate and Offload Media and the other Delicious Range plugins. This was your idea. Tourism site, hotels, attractions. I added golf courses, but yeah, this will be going on some some more demos. So thanks for that, Kevin. It's awesome. Good stuff. Um, we are close to time. Got maybe time for a couple more questions, but um, yeah. I have a quick question. Go for it. Um, yeah, I was wondering, like, what are your intentions for <clears throat> in regards to like moving things over from code into a more of a sort of power user standpoint in, in the back end? Because I, I work for a niche sort of like agency where, we, where we're making all the websites very custom. And obviously it's great to have all these different relationship fields and stuff in the back end for us because making you cust custom post types as well, it's great to just be able to click through in, in a UI instead of doing it in code. And it makes the theme a lot cleaner. Um, but what are your intentions behind that? Like, are you are you coming coming to to this thing like from a perspective of of a develop for a developer or like a power user kind of thing? Like, where do you where do you stand with with like your the, the whole migration from code over to the ACF? Yeah, I think I don't think it's a, it's a purposeful like we're leaving code you know hardcore code developers who just want to do stuff in code. We're not necessarily leaving them behind and moving to just the UI. It's it's more of a case of trying to fill gaps that we've had over time where people have gone to other tools to create. I mean, the custom post types thing is a uh, is a process that most people go through when they want to structure a site with WordPress because you're not just going to use posts and you're not just going to use pages. And then the next thing you do is add fields to them. And that is kind of like intrinsic to a workflow of ACF users. So we wanted to make that as easy as possible and that's smooth as possible and it'd be the first thing you do before you go and register the custom fields you go to create the post type and then you can easily add fields um to the post type obviously you can still do that in code you can still do it in json you can do it in php you can use some of the third-party builders that like allow you to register custom post custom fields with um like just php syntax so we're not we're not favoring one or the other but we're just trying to make the whole process easier for everybody and actually, we found some of the feedback, and it's even from people within the team who are, you know, developers who would just use the code way in the past, even with custom post types now, it's really easy to use the UI. Go and select what you want without having to go to the documentation on WordPress and figure out what every all the arguments mean for the registration function and just pick it in the UI, export it to PHP, and you can still use your existing method of doing it in code, committing it to Git, making it available to collaborate with other people but the UI just helps you get there quicker. Um, so it's it's smoothing out a lot of processes. Um, but yeah, we're, it's certainly not necessarily like a, we're just going, we're just trying to help new people or no code users or, you know, it's it's kind of rounding it out for everybody. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's. I mean, it's, it sounds like it's perhaps still helping you as well. Yeah, definitely. It helps everyone on our team. Yeah, we really like it, especially with the uh, yeah custom post types and tax taxonomies. It's it's so much simpler. Yeah, it's good. Oh, it's good to hear. Yeah, it it gives us a good common baseline though to build off of. I think I think that's the way that I look at it. Is is like we with the the UI, we're opinionated in the implementation up to a certain point, and after that is where you can start building from. So if if we can standardize bi-directional, like the logic behind that, because what you're doing currently is you're having to move that PHP code over to the next site and the next site uh, versus where you could have like just your fields, export them out and then import them over in the new site and it just works. Um, so it's it's more like kind of just kind of cleaning up the what you have to maintain to duplicate the effort across multiple sites. Alrighty, well, we are at time. Thank you very much for showing up. We appreciate it. It's nice to chat to you all. 
and and do some demos and and talk about what we've got going and it's nice to hear that it's going to be welcome so yeah thanks for coming along and we'll we'll see you next time thanks guys thanks,